Hey, everybody. I didn't think it would pick up that quick. I'm over here taking a drink of water. Um, good morning, everyone. Happy to be here with you. Wanted to start a couple minutes before 11 to give everyone a chance to log on. Uh, we're going to have a whole lot to talk about today. I mean, one thing about COVID-19 and this whole situation, you know, between COVID and real estate, there's always things to talk about. It, it, there's never a lack of things to talk about. And I'm happy to talk about good news today. I mean, the, the market has officially picked up. It has officially turned back on. Is it where it should be? No. But has it turned on? Without a doubt. Uh, seller impatience and buyer impatience has caught up with people and people are getting moving. So I'm going to talk to you about that, some market stats and some signs that it's clear that it's picked up. Also going to be talking about um, kind of the way forward. And I talked about that Monday to buyers and sellers, but I'm going to talk to it a, a little bit about it with all the realtors here and kind of how we should deal with it. Uh, we obviously got bumped out in Massachusetts till May 18th, so we'll spend a little bit of time on that. Um, you know, what does that mean? What do I think that means for buyers and sellers? What do I think will be a little different now that it's May 18th as opposed to May 4th? I'm going to break that down. We had also done a second survey late last week, and we have the results back. I'm going to talk about it a little, but we're not providing all the results to everyone. That's only going to be provided the, to those that were kind enough to take it and help out. Um, also, as always, at the end, going to do a Q&A. Uh, super important to do a Q&A, answer your questions. And, you know, I'm always here with you guys for an hour, hour and 10 minutes. That's no problem at all. So if you have questions, you can even start posting them now. Um, that's no trouble at all. But we'll be going over that. We'll also talk about what I expect for the summer. I have very specific recommendations for realtors on how you should handle your planning for the summer months and how you should plan on managing your time for the summer months. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's going to be busier than you've ever seen it. So get ready. Um, also going to talk about price drops. I mean, people are acting like a price is dropping a price is No, no, not happening, not happening. And if it does happen, it won't be in the next four five, six months. And I'm 100% certain on that, and I'm going to explain to you why. Um, remote notary bill got signed. That's really good news. Uh, enables uh, closing attorneys to get deals closed without having to uh, actually meet in person with buyers and sellers. I mean, attorneys were going in with, you know, masks on and suits, and uh, it was kind of crazy. So we enjoy opening up training to everyone. Um, most of you know at our company at Lamaki Realty, we do training every single Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 2.30. But since COVID, I decided to basically open it up to everyone at 11 a.m. each and every Wednesday to go over real estate updates, to talk about different things realtors should be doing, talk about planning. One of the things I'm going to talk about today is really how to plan for summer um, because it's going to be like you've never seen it. I'm sure of that. And I'm going to talk to you about some specific recommendations I have. Also, good news that the market has officially picked up. Going to go into that. Going to talk about moving forward. Going to talk about May 18th as opposed to May 4th. So we have a lot to talk about. And I'm just delaying a little to let people get on. But it's 11.03. So it's game time. All right. I have updates for all of you. Uh, and people watching from other states, I already see some tuning in from other states. Going to spend a few minutes on Massachusetts here, but the the, the updates are not very much different. Uh, there's a lot of similarity state to state, but I'll tell you something. To pick a random state, I got a nice, nice email from a realtor friend in Tennessee over the weekend that said, hey, you know what? It really hasn't changed here. I talked to a friend of mine, Jeff Willems in Arizona, and they went down about 20% for a couple of weeks and then right back up. So it really hasn't changed a ton for them. I was on a call the other day with a great broker owner out in uh, Green Ridge Realty up in Michigan, and they're very slow. That governor really put the clamps down, no showings. Uh, also, people from Jersey, New York are on there, but then Florida's busier. So it's just, it's very interesting what's going on. This is, a, there's no playbook for this. This is truly an unprecedented time, and we're all adapting. And honestly, I think the realtor community has done great adapting. I mean, I'm so grateful to see how people are adapting and see how people are still doing business. And, I, you know, I, it, it really makes me proud of the industry that we're in, and I'm very proud of our realtors at our company because 
they've really done a great job. And, and uh, people are still selling homes, people are still buying homes, but we're doing it in a very safe fashion. So to go over some stats with you, I wanna spend a few minutes on it. Listings last week were up 30% over the week before, right around 1,400 homes listed for sale in Massachusetts last week, as opposed to the week before. The week before there was about 1,000. Normally, we're 2,500 to 3,200 at this time of year. So still a ways to go, but we're in the right direction and we're through that low point. Uh, properties pending, uh, basically UAGs, contracts accepted, up dramatically, about 25% last week over the week before. And I can tell you this week is even busier. So here's my, predi here's my quick prediction. Monday, when I do my update on the Lamacchio Realty page at 3 p.m., I am certain I will be telling you even more homes were listed this week than last, more homes went pending this week than last. The percentage of homes pending um, compared this week to last will be higher. I'll bet you I'll be saying that. I made the same prediction last Monday, last Wednesday about this past Monday, and I was right. Let's see if I'm right again. I'm putting my neck out there, but we'll see. Um, the reason that I think it's busier is, you know, you think about how people think. That's what I spend most of my day doing, right, is how do I solve their problem? And socially, people are, well, some people are straight up getting sick of it. They're just like, enough of this. Let's get out and get to work. Um, and then there's people that are, there. maybe three or four weeks ago, were in the, stay at home, I will stay home. And now they're like, eh, all right, maybe I will go out. And I said that four weeks ago. I said, watch. Two or three weeks, everybody's willing to do it. When it turns into five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, people become less willing because they're worried about money. And it's understandable. It is understandable. Okay, so now there's a mix of emotions, but those emotions you've got to keep in mind are also the same with buyers and sellers. In late March, yeah, we'll wait a couple of weeks, we'll list in a couple of weeks. Well, that turned into May 4th. Now May 4th turned into May 18th. Remember I said this. There was a ton of people, and I'm going to talk about our survey soon, that said they're planning on listing after May 4th. Do you think every one of those is automatically now going to say, okay, I'm waiting till after May 18th? Not going to happen. Many of them are going to say, you know what? I was planning on May 4th. I was being patient. I'm done being patient. Everybody else is listing their home. Put my damn home on the market. So I think we're going to see a continual uptick in the amount of homes that are getting listed. Now, here is my ask. To everybody watching realtors in our company and outside it's time to start educating people it's time to start telling people that real estate is happening and if you notice i wasn't acting like that i wasn't talking like that two and three weeks ago but i am now because i don't want to see our market get hurt any more than it needs to or hurt unnecessarily there are people very smart people that are asking me questions like well is anyone even buying or selling right now <laughs> Guys, people buy and sell homes 365 days a year, every day for the last 100 years. It never stops. Does it slow down? Yes, but it never stops. It is very important that you all message that out and tell people what's going on. Tell people how people are listing homes. Tell people how people are buying homes. It's time to get back to that so that society realizes it because negativity can kill our business. Okay, it, it, when I say kill our business, kill our industry. Our business never stops. Even if prices go down, there's still people buying and selling. But it can really hurt housing prices unnecessarily. So imagine all those buyers you sold to in the last two years. Well, if everybody starts thinking prices are going to tank, you'll see people backing out. And then they could. Uh, we're not seeing that. It's impossible for prices. I had a long conversation with my dad this morning. Uh, he called while I was working out and I had my earbuds in. And he said, well, what's going on with houses? I said, dad, there's multiple offers all over the place, literally everywhere. Everything that's getting listing is listed as selling. He asked a key question because he understands real estate. Is inventory going up? I said, the amount of homes listed for sale is increasing. More people are listing, but the inventory cannot seem to stay above 11,000 homes for sale in Massachusetts for more than like three hours. He goes, oh, then there's no way prices are going down. I said, exactly. Now, my dad's an unordinary case. He has a son that's real estate obsessed. He also very much understands economics and supply and demand at a much higher level than the average person. But he also talks to me all the time who gives him this information. But it's important that all of you are educating buyers, sellers, family. People need to know what's going on. I saw a um, video of Lennox Scott, John L. Scott, great real estate company 
out in Seattle. And the owner said, listen, guys, you need to educate the public. You need to be telling people what is going on. And he's right. And he was saying that about three weeks ago. And I waited a week or two to say it. But now I'm saying it. It's very important that we do it. The blog that I wrote um, on, and the marketing team helped with, and other people, um, on why this is not 2008. Every realtor should read that top to bottom three times, okay? It does nothing for me personally if a realtor outside the company reads it, but what it does is it helps you understand the market, and it helps you be able to fend off the questions that we're all getting from buyers. Well, are prices going down? Is the market going to crash? You should see our survey. We said, what's your biggest concern? Everybody, my buyers think the market's going to crash. My buyers think the market's going to crash. My buyers are, guys, it is impossible for the market to crash when inventory is lower than it was a month ago. Impossible. So you need to explain that to them. Now, we're going to go through a difficult period, though, because remember, the March housing data just came out last week. The news didn't even cover it because March home sales were flat. End of May, you are going to see headlines across the country. Remember I said this, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, New York Times, Boston Globe, housing goes down 50%, housing goes down 40%. It's going to be ugly. End of June, probably going to be worse. Why? Because sold statistics are trailing indicators and when they look at housing stats every year, what they tend to do is compare to the same exact month the year prior. You have to educate people on this. Of course, there's going to be less home sales this month. I mean, there were only month to date, as of this morning at 5 when I looked, 5,000 homes listed for sale in Massachusetts month to date. Normally, this time of year, 10,000 to 11,000. Last year, it was 10,700. So we're down 53, 54%. So it's impossible for the market not to slow down. But the fact that the homes are getting eaten up as they're getting listed and they're selling right away and the total homes for sale can't go above 11,000 shows, there's no slack in the market. The market is um, strong. It's being held together by the low inventory. I saw Pam O'Connor do a great, Pam O'Connor is the, um, retired CEO from leading real estate companies of the world. She did an awesome video with Inside Real Estate. I want to say it was earlier this week or late last week. And Pam said, everybody's been complaining about low inventory for three years. She said something like this. She said, um, well, now they're going to be happy there's low inventory because that's what will save the market from collapsing. Again, statistically speaking, I want to plant this in all your minds. Right now this morning, 10,800 homes for sale in Massachusetts. This date in 2008. April 29, 2008, 45,000 homes on the market, right around there. Go look it up on an on-market snapshot. You cannot have a market crash with four, time, four and a half times less inventory. So I think you guys get the point. The biggest thing I'm trying to get you to understand and encourage you to do is educate. Don't be salesy about it. Don't, oh, no, market's not going to crash. Market's strong. What are you talking about? Market's great. No, market's slower. Tell people it's slower. It's true. But explain to them a crash is different. Prices have to come down. So, you know, like I said, people are adapting. People are rolling through it. I was at Home Depot twice over the weekend, and they've got these glass barriers now at the registers. People are passing things. Different stores you see, there's glass hanging at CVS, for example. When you go up to the pharmacy counter and you pass things underneath, they're doing that so that people aren't, um, you know, transmitting anything, uh, you know, when they're, getting whatever they need to get from a store. The point I'm getting at is people are adapting. Companies are adapting. You know, we're not made as a society to be shut down. This is crazy. It's never happened. I was saying to a friend this morning, if 10 of us sat together and said, let's think of the five craziest ways that an economy could collapse or an economy could dramatically slow down, we would never thought of this. But we're going to get through it. It's literally going to do this, our economy. Right back up. Okay, you look at GDP for, I think it was the first quarter. I think it just came out, or was it last month? It's negative 4.9. That's not that bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. Q2 is obviously going to be down dramatically. Q3 will be the transition, and we will come out of it after that. You know, But three consecutive quarters of negative growth equals a recession. But people are adapting. People are getting in gear. 
and that's or have gotten in gear really as of 10 days two weeks ago and that's why we're rolling through this but we've got to make sure as realtors that we are very very safe uh, we need to be safe about the way we're showing homes safe about the way we're meeting with buyers and sellers tenants landlords we've got to be safe follow those instructions that we put out on safehomeshowing.com we actually added something to it over the weekend that we didn't think of but our friends in chicago at, at properties made us think of it because they put out an awesome video and they had a i think she must have been an actor no she wasn't an actor she was like their director of ops or something and she said touching light switches so we added that in we said tell the sellers leave the doors open that you want to leave the closets that you're willing to have people look at leave them open but also leave the lights on that you want for the for the lights that you want on if a seller doesn't turn those lights on buyers and buyers agents should be walking through like this not touching 50 things right so use those items on safehomeshowing.com because that will guide you there's a great infographic in there there's also signs that we're using at our listings and our realtors are very much adhering to it uh, and i hope that other realtors i know that many other realtors have adapted to some of the recommendations we had literally across the country i know of companies in california atlanta florida texas arizona uh chicago i could go on and on that are using the, that information so use it uh now got to talk about may 18th okay uh we got pushed out from may 4th so what does this change well, I already alluded to it five minutes ago. I do not see every seller that was willing to wait until May 4th to list saying, well, okay, now I'll wait till May 18th. Not going to happen. I bet you a third or half of them say, list my home. I'm sick of waiting. Uh, I see other people doing it. If other people are doing it, I can list my home. That might change what I had predicted. I had predicted that in the week or two after May 4th, there would be 10 or 12,000 homes getting listed. Now, It'll probably be stretched out a little more from the 4th to like the beginning of June, and maybe it'll only be five or 8,000 a week. But either way, it's still a lot. And I recommend, I said this before, encourage your sellers to beat the wave. Do not wait around for um, to get completely on the other side of that date. I mean, when you get on the other side of that date, there'll be a lot of sellers, not a ton, but there'll be some that'll say, I want to wait even an extra week or two. Okay you will be listing with so many other people, your listing could possibly get drowned out. That's why I recommend that people encourage their sellers to list earlier. Remember here in Massachusetts, you can list and not even show the home during the state of emergency, but you can have it out there on the market and then eventually show it. Um, so that's something that I see changing. Another thing that happened in the last week is schools got um bumped out you know canceled the, the kids aren't going back to school until september how else can i put it it's not uh not exciting but it's understandable i i'm i'm with the governor on that there's been some things that i've agreed and disagreed with but um you know i'm not the one who's making the calls and kids are i have four children they don't properly wash their hands they don't know how to go in a store or anywhere without touching 52 things so i think it's okay the question becomes will there be summer camp that's interesting. And I'm talking about these things because they do have an effect on our market. They have an effect of the workload on the workload of our realtors. And I'm going to be talking to you about that in a few more minutes on how I think realtors should be planning. So again, just to recap, what do I think is going to change from the May 4th to the May 18th? I don't think everybody's going to wait till the 18th. You're going to see a lot of people that say, put my darn home on the market. I want to sell. Also because they want to be in their new home before the school year in September and they're starting to say, my window here is going to close. Well, I have news for you. A little glimpse into what I'm going to talk about in 10 minutes. Our season is going like this. It's getting crunched the year, but it's going to be so busy. Um, all right, survey results. couple things. Many comments from realtors about buyers and sellers getting used to it, being more comfortable. That's why more are listing, etc. cetera. Um, still a lot of people holding off on listing. We knew that. People planning to list after the stay at home order is lifted is still at 70% of realtors are saying that their sellers are waiting. Most of their sellers are waiting. That's 70%. The amount of homes that are going to get listed is going to be crazy. People are saying that the greatest motivation with buyers is the interest rates. Uh, these rates are free money. It's fascinating to me um, how much lower they are, how low they are, and I mean, what a deal you can get nowadays. Uh, from this kind of 
you know, interest rate environment. You can save a substantial amount of money. I mean, one point on an interest rate over 30 years, $400,000 purchase is like, I don't I mean, I don't want to say the number off the top of my head, but it may be $100,000. It's a substantial amount of money when you do it out over 30 years. So have that in mind. Um, there was talk from realtors in the survey about buyers just getting impatient. Um, sellers getting impatient, but not as much. And I'll tell you what that reminds me of. What do I say every single year? Why do I always say the sellers who list earlier in the year do better? The reason is the sellers um, wait longer than the buyers. The buyers are impatient. Once the clock ticks midnight and January 1st of a new year comes out, buyers come out in droves, especially in that first week. And buyers are out searching for homes, excited to find homes. Sellers delay. They got this thing about the flowers and they don't understand that they're better off listing earlier. This is the same situation. Sellers are being a bit more patient than buyers. That's why the sellers that list sooner are going to do better. Remember, I said that. Um, but there are some buyers on the sidelines. We're still estimating it's down. We had thought it was about our surveys and talking to people. We thought about 25 to 30 percent of buyers were on the sidelines. We think that might be more like a 20 to 25 now. There's more buyers coming out. And that's also partly because listings have increased, properties being listed. Uh, so anyway, for those of you that were nice enough to participate in our survey, the survey will be sent out to you this evening. And you can look at all the details. Now, let's talk about the crazy summer that I expect and how all realtors should prepare for it. Um, it is going to be an extremely busy summer. I am going to tell you a few things very bluntly right now. It will be the busiest summer you've ever seen. Uh, if you want to sell a ton of homes this year, you seriously should probably cancel your vacation if you didn't already because it's going to be that busy. And the season is going to get shortened. So normally it gets, you know, this year was a mild winter, so it started earlier, and the season kind of gets stretched out from busy, real busy, from late February till August, right? Well, now a lot of the season got pushed forward. This is like, you know, February 2015, we had all that snow and it pushed the year forward a month and we were gangbusters busy and it went all the way into the late summer. This is going to be more. This is going to be a more extreme example. I guarantee it. I'm 100% sure. You can quote me on this. You can write bad blogs about me if you want to, if I'm wrong, because I'm that sure I won't be wrong. This will be the busiest summer that any of us have ever seen, ever. And it is going to be because of what happened here and because of so many people going on the sidelines for 60 days. So now you're going to get the people that were already planning to list in Dubai in May, June, July, August, plus all of the people that stayed on the sidelines in March, April, and part of May on top of each other. Okay, so my recommendation to realtors is plan accordingly. Line up family members to watch your children if you need uh, help with your children. Line up babysitters. Line up nannies. I don't know, you know, that's your business. We all have our own way of watching our children. Um, but I'm telling you, if you still want to sell a ton of homes this year, you've got to make arrangements and you've got to do it differently. And I do want to say, I mean, I'm the one that does time management trainings and talks about how it's important that people get home for dinner every night. But I will tell you, I'm going to be I'm going to be a little more blunt about it. You know, we're all spending time with family like mad right now. I mean, this is like off the charts and, and I'm enjoying a lot of it. Um, but and I know many of you are enjoying a lot of it. And I know some of you are going crazy and can't wait to leave. And I know there's people getting divorced because they're sick of seeing each other. But in all seriousness, the time that you don't have with your family, May, June, July and August, it's getting made up for right now because of how much you, everybody has been together. And, and if I was in your shoes, and I'll tell you, I've learned this from experience, you've got to communicate that to your family, to your children, to your significant other, and say, listen, since I've been held back, when, th when I go back, things are going to be busier than ever before. And if I don't take advantage of it, this is going to be a lost year for me or for us, you know, especially if you're the primary income earner. If you're someone who's used to making $200,000 a year, and now COVID happened and you're worried if you're even going to make 150, I have news for you. You might still be able to make 200, but be ready. You're going to have to work like a savage from 
in June, July, and August. It's going to be extremely busy. The amount of listings that are going to come on, buyers and sellers, people are going to be on top of each other. Buyers are going to be asking realtors to show them 10 homes, communicate with other agents in your office, uh, communicate with agents that don't do as much business, maybe discuss with them a coverage plan that they could cover for you so that you can keep your clients happy. Because I'm telling you, you're going to go from being slow over the last four weeks to being completely having a feeling of being run over and having a feeling of being overwhelmed. So we're really going to go from one extreme to the other. And I know this might not be exciting to hear, but I like to tell you guys what I really see. And um, all the numbers are telling me, every indicator is telling me, look at mortgage applications, they're up again. Like everything is pointing toward people getting back out there. Mortgage companies have said once people are reemployed, even for a day, they can get approved for a mortgage. You used to have to be reemployed 60 days or something like that. Now they're saying one day. So things are going to turn back on. Now, everybody that got laid off and furloughed is not going to be able to just buy immediately. Some people financially are going to have to wait. But you've got to make sure that you manage your time correctly, set expectations with family, set expectation with expectations with whoever helps with your children because if you don't you're really going to miss out it's going to be very very busy but it's going to last about four months it's going to be may june july august last week in august is when everybody will start going did it slow down then the real test is going to come in when we get to fall that's when we're going to find out if we see a market adjustment of some sort because of what happened here my bet we see a slowdown. I don't think it'll be crazy. I think it's going to be similar to the fall of 18 or similar to the fall of 14 when it was slower, but not terrible. Uh, election years are a little worse. Fall of 16 wasn't that bad, even though it was election year, but it was slower. So, you know, have that in mind. Plan accordingly. Also, make sure that you keep some of the things in place that you're doing now to save yourself time. Now, I've talked to you guys about this a lot. I do not recommend realtors go to closings. I've been saying it for 12 or 13 years. I've been training people on it. Some listen, some don't. Closings for, are for attorneys. They're not for realtors. Now, all of a sudden, because of COVID, realtors are being told not to come. When things turn back on, don't go. You've adapted. You've gotten used to it. Hopefully, you're calling your clients the morning of closing. Hey, you feeling good? Just want to make sure you're ready for everything today. Do you have any questions for me? All right, great. I've already spoken to your attorney. I've already spoken to your mortgage broker. Everybody's feeling good. Everybody's on track. Go ahead, go to closing. Let me know if you have trouble. Text me or call me from there if you need me. That is the right way to do it. Uh, attending home inspections unnecessarily. That's another item that came up from this. Um, about four weeks ago, sellers started saying, I don't want anybody here but the inspector. Great. I've used this example before. When you go to the doctors and your arm hurts and they send you down the hall to radiology, does the doctor go with you to radiology? No. There is no reason, and it is a mistake. It's a legal trap. If you go to a home inspection on your listing, I do not recommend it. Don't do it. So now we've adapted to that. Don't get sucked back in to your old habits that you don't need to be doing. Don't do that. Use the new habits, even as a company. I'm gonna give you guys some examples of things we're doing, some of which we haven't announced yet. We're now taking incoming wires for deposits, and guess what? Accounting is going, geez, this is actually better. We don't have to deal with paper checks. Did you get the check? Didn't you get the check? We're liking the incoming wires. More of our realtors have gotten on direct deposit. We love it. They're not gonna get off direct deposit when this lifts, right? Um, other examples, deposits on listings. When, when buyers make like deposit checks, there's a way now to scan it and send it right in. All of these things that have come about, we're going to stick with these efficiencies that have been created. We're going to stick with and keep doing as a company. You should be doing them too, because each and every one of you has your own company. Each and every one of you is a business under our umbrella. So, don't go back to doing inefficient things once the light switch turns on again and it gets very busy, which it really has already turned on. Don't make that mistake. Um, very important not to because you're going to need to save all the time you can. And I'm telling you, you are going to, two or three weeks from now, run into five buyers asking for showings on the same night, 
on the same day in the weekend and you're going to feel pulled in 50 directions listing agents to list a lot of properties you're going to run into sellers that 10 people want uh either controlled open houses or block showings on the weekends and you're going to go how can i go to all these listings connect with other agents in your company agents that aren't doing as much business my recommendation to some of our newer agents and maybe some of our agents that aren't doing as much business raise your hand to the top agents say hey i'm here to help you great learning opportunity maybe you could potentially work something out with them i don't know that's up to you guys but every realtor out there listening should be doing that because i'm telling you every top agent you are going to see the busiest three to four months of your entire career coming at you very hard uh starting starting now but in about a week or two it's going to go wild maybe three maybe we're going to get closer to the 18th but i'm telling you you're going to look back and say jesus i remember when anthony lamacchio said this was going to happen that guy was right so keep that in mind now i want to spend another two minutes on this topic because it bothers me it's kind of related to the beginning price drops too many buyers think prices are going to fall i want to repeat some of what i said in the beginning for prices to fall you have to have excess supply we have the opposite we have a decrease in supply you need to articulate that to your buyers show them on market snapshots people don't believe what they hear they believe either what they experience or what they see so use on market snapshots like crazy do it right now to a year ago it's a great mls report my favorite report for many years and show it to buyers make sure they are very very clear that inventory is lower not higher supply and demand business um make sure they're very clear about that i already talked a bit about fall and i discussed with you how i think that that will be the test for the market like when we get to the fall i do think we'll experience some slowness some slightly higher inventory uh, maybe even higher than last year but i don't see some major correction coming from the, from the market and if i did i'd be the first one to tell you uh because that's my job here and i don't want to be wrong about it make sure to watch the existing inventory in your market remember when i rolled out the six things that every realtor should be doing to prepare themselves for this changed market i'm going to open it up right here i talked to you about being compassionate not selling not pushing people well now you do need to get back to being um more pushy more affirmative like you know explaining to people what's going on trying to obtain their business trying to get on the phone with them trying to show them homes you have to get back to some of that getting in touch with every past client hopefully you did it being the resource hopefully you did it uh watching inventory levels that was number four i said make sure to watch inventory levels closely i am monitoring massachusetts homes for sale every single day at noon since this started the first three weeks i actually watched twice a day and now i've been every day at noon and i'm watching inventory you should be doing it in every town you do business in uh you know in your in the area if you want off sell a home in some other market who cares but if you're an agent in worcester you should be doing worcester holden grafton millbury um shrewsbury watch all those towns make sure you're clear on what's going on with inventory i can name 50 other towns and 50 other examples but you guys get it that is going to be the indicator to tell us what happens with home prices i do not think we're going to see some big fall at worst i think we'll see maybe a percentage or two this year but i doubt it um ppp loans uh, paycheck protection uh program yesterday i saw a presentation with the president and uh, secretary mnuchin and a lot of other people talking about the success of the program there's obviously no denying that this program has been very successful for businesses uh they they funded 14 years worth of loans in 14 days it's fascinating to me uh how much money they put out but there have been a few hiccups obviously how couldn't there be with that many loans the thing that i'm here to talk to you all about is what does it mean for a realtor i told you all a week ago in two weeks ago i was skeptical on whether or not realtors could get it i have two stories to tell you uh two success stories i know i now know of two realtors that, that do not have a business account, that do not have a payroll or any employees that were approved for the PPP funds and they are supposed to be funded today or tomorrow. I know of two realtors. 
I warned both of them that I'm, I question whether or not they will be able to get it forgiven. But they're both taking it, and I think they're smart to take it because it's 1% interest for two years. That's like free money. So in any event, um, wanted to mention that just as a warning. I will again say that I recommend realtors go for it. Why wouldn't you go for, I mean, people think nothing of running up credit cards. Why wouldn't you go for a loan that's 1% interest? If it gets forgiven, well, that's, that's gravy. That's a bonus for you. Um, but be aware that I think getting approved could be tricky. And if you do get approved, I think that forgiveness is, if I had to bet, less than a 50% chance, just my opinion, unless they change something. National Association is on it. I've got to give credit. I know I do it every time. You guys are going to think I'm on their payroll. The National Association of Realtors has absolutely been fantastic to us realtors, to us business owners, broker owners during this situation. They have done so much incredible work. I can't thank them enough. Um, I also talked to you guys, I believe, earlier about how the governor signed the remote notary bill. Uh, that's just another example of people acclimating to the situation, acclimating to what's going on. And you're going to see closing attorneys take advantage of it, not in all cases, but in many cases. And that will help decrease the logjam that we expect. Right at the beginning of this, about five weeks ago, we wrote a blog on why we expected a real estate logjam, a bunch of things to get jammed up and not flow as well. Um, and it's been pretty good. I've got to give the attorneys credit. They've been closing deals. This will help more. Going to take questions in about five minutes. So if you have questions, start posting them right away and I will get to them. Also a reminder for all realtors, uh, make sure your clients are clear, your past clients, because hopefully you've touched base with all of them. If they need a mortgage forbearance, make sure they're clear on the terms that they're getting. Freddie Mac came out and said, no one will have to pay it in a lump sum. I thought that was fantastic. FHFA has also bent. A lot has changed in the last, last 10 days. So some of the services might not be saying it yet, but they ought to be. If they're not, then that's a problem. Look at the mortgage page that we put on our website. Um, we put all the information to all the main servicers, contact information. We had staff members call the mortgage companies and make sure they were the right um, phone numbers. And they pretended to be borrowers until they got to the point that they confirmed it and then they got off the phone. So we went through that work because we want everyone to be able to obtain this information. If you're a realtor at another company, go rip off the information. Go to Lamakia Realty right on top, COVID-19 resource section, click down the bottom, click the button that takes you to the re mortgage resource page, and there's the information. You can also get there from the Crush It and RE page, but make sure to do that. A couple of other reminders that I want to say. Guys, you need to be very in touch with your clients. I talked about this at our company meeting an hour ago. I talked to you all about it a week ago. If on a 1 to 10, the best realtor in the world being a 10, the one being the worst, if you were a 6 or a 7, if you continue to perform at 6 level, your business is going to go down. You'll get very busy for the next three months. Your business will go down after that. It might even go down in the next three months because it'll get so busy you'll have a hard time handling it. So your skill level needs to increase to do as well in a market that's slower. Okay, it's not a mistake. It's not by accident that the top agents do best in slower markets. That's not by accident. That's because we have experienced la-la land for the last three years where every home you list sells, okay? And it's lulled some people to sleep. But this is the time that realtors need to grind. You need to apply yourself. You need to get all the training you can get. And if you're on here, you're already taking steps at doing that, and I give you a lot of credit. So why don't I take some questions? I think my friend Lindsay is going to send some questions over to me because she goes through all of the um, questions for me and sends them over. Lindsay, maybe, possibly. All right, Kelly Dimbat asked, will our credit score or business rating change by accepting or applying for these loans? God, no, nothing wrong with getting loans. This, this isn't, we got it. We got PPV money. I'm not hiding from it. I'm not, oh, I'm, embar I'm not embarrassed. It's a government program. They put it out to help businesses. I know competitors are getting it, so we got it. Um, no pain at all in doing it. Um, weren't able to get as much as I hoped because it's based on 2019 staff levels, but 
needless to say, we're still grateful for it. So no penalty there. Get in touch with your bank. Uh, Kate, can I get your opinion on how I can advise my buyer client that the seller has already done an inspection? Is making the report available for us, but our buyer wants to do their own and seller is not allowing. Then your buyer's got to make a decision. Um, you know, that doesn't surprise me that the buyer is saying that. Buyers often want their own inspections. I'm not a big fan of sellers doing inspections in advance. I never have been. Um, but your buyer's going to have to make a decision. Laura Corcoran, um, new construction, what will happen with them? They'll sell off the shelves. I mean, unless you're in a, in a second home market, which maybe you are. Um, but if not, I don't see any problem for new construction. There's not enough inventory. Deb O'Halloran, question. Do you see town offices starting to get back in gear and handle sale-related activities, permits and inspections for flips and new constructions, MLC certificates, etc.? cetera? Um, not to the extent that I'd like, Deb. I was actually on, the, on a call this morning with a um, government affairs expert in our state in reference to my dad's company. Uh, they paved driveways. I see landscapers all around my neighborhood. And people that pave driveways can't get permits to pave driveways. To me, it's insane. These people are working outside. And if landscapers can be out, why can't they? But cities and towns are making their own decisions. So I see a little bit of an improvement from cities and towns, but I, I don't see it to the extent that I would like to see it. Um, Jerry, any update on MLS pin and coming soon in mass? Jerry, great, great question. I should have talked about this at company updates. I meant to. Uh, leave it to you to think of it. So MLS PIN has a board of directors meeting in late May, and they are voting on it. I believe voting on it at that meeting. I would suspect that they will follow suit with the National Association and basically eliminate coming soons is effectively what's going to happen. Uh, but it hasn't happened yet, and that's why we as a company, we're recommending that agents do them. We're helping agents do them. We have a whole coming soon product for our agents. They've been doing it and getting a tremendous amount of leads. But I think that once it goes to needing to do it through MLS and needing to list within so many days, I think you're going to see them go away. So more, more to, on, to come on that in a month. Debbie Rose, all right. What are your thoughts on unemployment assistance for a realtor? Do you feel realtors should apply, although they can work? Uh, yeah, if you need the money, I feel you should apply. I mean... You know, just because you can work doesn't mean you're making money. So if you're not getting consistent income or you don't have closing scheduled, uh, then I don't see why you wouldn't apply if you can. I mean, that, that, that will help you. It's a personal decision. I know some people have some opinions on that, but it's up to you. Um, I, I, wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't be ashamed of it if I were you to do that. Um, Let's see, there was another question here. Okay, so Aldo says he just got approved for PPP. He's an LLC. That's what I keep hearing. Most people say, I'm an LLC, I'm a corporation, I have one employee. Only two people do I know of that are 1099 realtors that got approved. So, And they haven't been funded yet. But I think they will get funded because they got approved. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, Elizabeth Foley, people think that when inventory goes up, the prices will drop. Therefore, they're waiting until August. Prices will not drop by August. I am, will guarantee you uh, that won't happen. There'll be some price adjustments in the summer like there always are, but they will not actually sustainably drop by then. If there is any drop, it'll really be in the fall. And here's the thing. The real test will come after the first of the year because I remember 07 going into 08. We had a slow fall. And then when we get to the first of the year, it didn't pick up that much. That's when we knew we were in trouble. I haven't seen that happen since then, and I don't expect it to happen here. I think next year will be gangbusters. Um, and, and, you know, these buyers that want to wait, I mean, some people you can't convince them. Hey, wait, good luck. Stay in touch with them, send them properties. I'll tell you something, though. Right now, the last month, it's easier for people to say, well, I'll just wait. Well, I'll time the market. People are naturally sheep. Okay, when they see other people buying and other people selling, at some point, they're going to say, well, you know, Cousin Bobby bought, you know, my sister Susie, these people bought, I'm buying. And you'll see their attitude change once it gets busier. Um, hi, Mary Ellen. Let's see here. Other questions. 
Yeah, Paul, you're right, buddy. Paul's a guy that joined us two years ago, doubled his business two and a half in two and a half years, doubled his business the next year, and he's been grinding, doing all the training that he possibly can. Jerry, I know you're ready, buddy. Jerry's been a good uh, confidant to me with some of this stuff. We've been chatting about what do you think is going to happen with this? What do you think is going to happen with that? And I appreciate it. Uh, let's see, seven other comments. Lillian Leone, can you collect unemployment if you have another job and get a W-2? Uh, check with the state on that. Do you have any thoughts on the multifamily market? Yeah, Colleen, okay. Multifamily market I'm a little bit more concerned about. Uh, I should actually spend a few minutes on that, so let me let me do that. This law that went through in Massachusetts, the governor signed it. I don't disagree, I don't agree. I think it goes way too far. Um, you know, don't pay your rent is trending on Twitter uh, for May first. They really made the law very one-sided. Obviously, right now, nobody should be evicted and kicked out on the street right now during COVID. It's it would be a disaster. But should they tie landlords' hands to the point that they can't even so much as send a notice? No, they shouldn't, and I think it's wrong. And some attorneys are banding together to say that it violates the Constitution, and they are looking at that. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it, I mean, if it got overturned, I think that'd be a big deal, but I wouldn't be surprised if they amended that law because many realize that it somewhat is motivating tenants to not pay their rent over the next few months because they know there's no real penalty. And that will put multifamily owners in a bad position. Now, keep in mind, I love when I hear people say, yeah, but they stopped foreclosures too. Who cares? That doesn't mean anything. They stopped foreclosures for the next 90 days. If people don't pay their mortgage now, they don't get foreclosed on in the next 90 days. They get foreclosed on in a year. There's a delay in Massachusetts. So this is not relief for landlords now they did say oh well they insist that mortgage companies uh don't require people to pay their mortgages for 90 days that's another item that's being questioned by the constitution i have a hard time believing that a state can tell a mortgage company you can't be paid for 90 days and i'll bet you you're going to see banks sue the state so am i concerned about multifamilies? yes i am more than i am about condos and single families that's for sure Don Kelly, will more companies move away from depositing paper checks going forward? I think so. We're doing it. We're working on it. We're going to be talking to you about something that we're coming out with. We might even be talking about it next week. Um, we're linking up with another company to make it easier to get deposits in and get them in the, into escrow even faster. Um, all right, my friends. I think that's a wrap. Good to see you all. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Let me know what other questions that you have. Next week on Monday on the Lamakia Realty page at 3 o'clock, I'm going to be going over a lot of statistics. I'm going to be showing you how the market did this and how we're now coming out of it. And we're actually going to do it over, I think, Zoom so that I can share different charts and graphs. Because I'm always sitting here spitballing to all of you and telling you about different things. But I, I don't often actually show you the data unless we show you a blog. I'm actually going to go over with you in like a presentation format for all of our buyers and sellers and realtors are welcome to tune in. So I hope to see you um, then. Thanks, my friends. Take care.